Cork's Red FM. Um, I suppose, Paul, you could look at it that way, but I mean, um, Cork have been tested to share what we, we'd say by Tipperary. When I say tested, right, they've tested themselves as to where they're at um, as a team, you know, and they certainly have come up trumps. I mean, they didn't disappoint anybody against against Tipperary, you know, so they were probably always going to go into the Limerick match in an all-win situation. If they won by 20 points or 40 points, it was expected anyway, you know, so, I mean, I was at the match myself, and you go 10 minutes or 15 minutes into the match, you knew there wasn't going to be any danger there from Limerick. They were going to win the match no matter what happened. And, you know, that gets, gets into the mindset of players and stuff like that, like we're going to be comfortable here, you know. So, I mean, it was a way down the level of, of where they were at against Tipperary. But I believe everything has gone well in the camp for the last couple of weeks, the last two weeks, and like they're they're really eager for for the Waterford game. And look, history has shown, Waterford and Turles, it brings its own, uh, it brings its own big match hype, but it also brings serious, serious excitement to the game of hurling because... Uh, recently there, I mean, we've seen on TG Carr those games that Cocker played against Waterford over the last 10 years have been fantastic games. They've been high-scoring games, great goals and stuff like that, and serious, serious uh, uh, entertainment for fans, to be honest with you. And that's what I think everybody will be looking forward to going to Torres on Sunday, that these two teams, they don't hold anything back. They have a goal of each other, but they do it in the best of manner as well. Yeah, and it's difficult to know what to expect from Waterford uh, this weekend to Moss. They had a four-point win over Clare in their semi-final. What did you make of them on the day? Well, you see, uh, Paul, exactly the same. You, you're probably saying the same about Cork as well, right? Um, I mean, that, like, maybe they weren't really tested against against Limerick. And you could say likewise against Waterford, right? They weren't uh, overly impressive against Clare, right? They did enough to win the game in the end. Um, Clare did put up a, a, a very strong challenge to win the first half. And uh, it was only probably maybe to the latter end of the second half that Waterford started to pull away and made a few changes and brought in substitutions. I mean, like the competitive half that actually changed the game for them. And he went in a wing back and got a, a couple of points for them. And, that, that gave them a huge lift. I mean, I, I, I think Waterford probably said to themselves, look, we've always been able to handle Cork. We've got the measure of them on a few occasions in Turles, right? So we still have a very, very good team. They would feel themselves. But it, 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 you, you, it must have finally is audible performing on the day. Over the 70 minutes in Turles, or Turles farm for the last couple of weeks can go out the window, to be honest with you. I mean, Galway have shown as National League champions. They did win in two championship matches, and then they go to Crow Park last weekend and they flop, you know. So it's all about handling the occasion for the younger guys and for the more experienced guys. It's getting back out of what we've seen over the last number of years, and certainly Cork have done that against Tipperary this year. Yeah, just going back to the league game between Cork and Waterford earlier in the year, Tomas, it finished in a draw. Waterford scored 220 and 116 of that came from Owen Kelly. No, he's a bit of an injury doubt for tomorrow, but uh, the majority of that 116 came from Freeze. If he does play tomorrow, Cork's discipline will need to be good because Kelly can punish you. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean every every team will have a natural leader as a guard to free taking, and I mean in most games of hurling now, and we've seen over the last couple of weeks again, right, that the game has probably got a bit more physical than than, than we've ever imagined because maybe guys have no fear with the helmets and stuff like that. There's a lot more frees being conceded. So if you if if you have somebody like the likes of Owen Kelly in your half hour, right, I'm sure Dennis Walsh will be will be. Uh, making strong uh, recommendations to the car backline that they don't foul because he has punished us in the past and if you give him free out of 65 yard line he certainly will punish Cork on Sunday as well you know so certainly I think Dennis will be saying lads we okay we played hard we played tight but we don't give away too many frees yeah and from a Cork perspective Tomas it is great to be back in a Munster final first time since 2006 and a win this weekend will put Cork straight back into an All-Ireland semi-final that is a massive incentive on its own yeah and I mean I think key thing is like the Cork public have always got behind uh, Cork football Cork hurling they love the Munster final day they love the op- the opportunity of travelling to Turles and they're getting that again on Sunday and I'm sure there's going to be a huge Cork row. but most importantly it's for the players themselves these are, guys, these are the guys that are putting on all the hard training these are guys that want the rewards of winning Munster titles getting to our Ireland semi-finals and you're right Paul like, I mean this is a massive massive incentive to the winners right these Waterford on Sunday you're in our Ireland semi-final you're on the other side of the draw of the Cats again, right, which would be a crucial thing as well, mm-hmm. the way they're going at the moment. You know? So there's an awful lot of it, uh, uh, incentive for both sides, for Waterford and for Cork, and you hopefully Cork can shade it. Yeah, I know we were all uh, talking about Izaki after the tip game uh, to Moss. The impact he had in that game was absolutely massive. Do you see Waterford doing anything in particular to try and stifle his impact on Sunday? Because looking at that tip game, I mean, he looked unplayable. Unplayable, but I mean, he obviously got supply from 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 different areas of the field, and I'm sure Davy Fitzgerald has watched that video over and over again, and he said to himself, "I mean, uh, we can't let happen what happened to Tipperary. We can't let John Gardner get on five or six balls in a row 
and he reading um, down on top of Zaki, giving him possession at one, at one, uh, one after the other, you know. So we got to close down midfield. Certainly we can't give him the freedom to park where Jerry O'Connor is running out, picking up the loose ball and stuff like that and getting it inside to his Zaki as well, you know. So, I mean, I'm sure he's going to pull an awful lot of guys back and try and close it down, not leave as much space uh, as there was against Tipperary for the cock forward and, and try and make it as tight as possible and then counteract on the other side, right, where he has the likes of Milan up front, he has um, Owen Kelly up front, you know, whether the Shanahan's involved or not remains to be seen, but he would have very, very talented um, Willumphy up front as well, where he has an awful lot of pace as well and likes to run at people as well. And he will be trying to create space at one end for, for his own forwards, but at the other end, obviously, trying to close out the game at Cork and try and stop the situation where long-range balls from half-back line are going to find Izaki in a jitter of the square, you know. So it will be interesting because, I mean, Cork themselves, it was probably predictable in the second half every way the ball went to, went in there. Um, you'd hope at some times as well, right, that there isn't all about one man, that there are other players in, the, in, the, in that car panel as well that can actually do damage as well. And you look at the two O'Connors, very effective. You look at Niall McCarthy, who was tremendous against Limerick, I thought, as well, you know. So Patrick Hogan as well in the, in, in the corner and Kieran Murphy, they're all able to cause, do damage themselves, you know. So, like, the emphasis, OK, might be on Izaki and stuff like that, getting the ball in there. But there is five other forwards there as well can, can do equal damage as well. And I think that could be the secret as well. Everybody might be, might be watching the big man, but somebody else maybe come up trumps and, and, and cause water for the headache then. Yeah, and you mentioned Kilkenny there as well, Tomas. Very, very impressive last weekend in defeating Galway. I heard James O'Connor saying during the week that if, if any team is going to stop Kilkenny, he thinks it'll be Cork. Um, looking at the, the calibre of the Cork performance against Tipperary and looking at what Kilkenny produced against Galway last weekend, do you think Cork have what it takes to stop Kilkenny? It's <laughs> early days, I mean, to be talking about that, Paul. I mean, mm. um, yeah, I mean, oh, you, you would probably think, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, Cork, if they get to another in semi final, um, by winning on Sunday and they get through the semi final situation that they're in Ireland final against Kilkenny yet, that they won't have a chance, certainly, and they've proven in the past that they can handle Kilkenny, but that's too far down the road, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't think anybody here would be entertaining that. I mean, they have a big obstacle in Waterford, right, and the key should be on just getting over Waterford, get to the semi final, look who your opponents after that. Everybody's looked at Kilkenny and said, yeah, they're unbeatable, you know, but I mean, that's for another day, I think, realistically, you know. I mean, it's all about getting the win, Turles. Yeah, absolutely, Tomas. Just very finally putting you on the spot. How do you see it going on Sunday? Well, I mean, I, I've been I've been very impressed with Cork throughout the National League campaign um, because they've actually introduced a lot, of, uh, a lot of new blood. They're giving uh, youngsters their opportunity. OK, we've come back to the tried and tested as well. Um, but I think these guys are out to prove something for themselves. You know, there was an awful lot of hassle within Cork, within Cork last year. Um, there was an awful lot of grief on either side between players, supporters and clubs. Um, they re- kind of repay themselves on that basis uh, with their performance against against Tipperary. They get themselves to a month of final. So, I mean, they know the importance of this is, is getting to an all Ireland same final. So, on that basis, I would think Carter maybe to shade by three or four points. Red FM. Cork's Red FM. Red FM.